Hi guys, in today's how-to video, we're going to be looking at this Glowworm 30HXI. So the fault you can see here is F13. So we're going to investigate what that is. So F13 could be either the main PCB, or it could be a communication error between the low voltage components. That could be the thermistor, it could be the water pressure sensor and other various components. So this is what I'm going to investigate. So to remove the case of this boiler, you just got two screws at the bottom there and there. And then once you remove them, then that whole panel will then come off and get inside the boiler. You can do this with even a star bolt or you can use a little flat screwdriver to remove the screws. Now what we're going to do now, we're going to remove this um, casing. So we've got a screw here and a screw there. And then we're going to look at the burner and we'll listen to see what's going on inside this compartment. So we're just removing it now. Miles is on the case, I forgot to say. Hello. Hi Miles. Hello. He's progressing in his little venture with his dad. But it will become a big adventure. So we're just going to lift that off now. Okay. We're just going to turn the power back on. And then what we're going to do, observe what happens. And then see what's going on. So the fan's running. I heard a spark heard something, but we've got no ignition because that green light should have come on and we should have seen the flame through the window there. So let's try it again. Actually what happened, you couldn't actually see it, we could see the flame, but it was still sparking while the flame was on, so that's why it didn't come on. So we've got a detection problem. Looking at this earth clamp here, well, this, the way it's, you can see it's loose there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull it off and make it more secure so it's not moving like that. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to gently squeeze this just a tiny bit so it's going to be tighter on here. So I'm just going to press it a little bit. Ever so slightly, and then it feels better. Yeah, that's better. So we'll give that a go, put the lead back on, and then try it, see if that makes an improvement. What I've decided to do looking at this lead again, I'm going to remake it. So I'm going to cut this off totally, put a new connector on, cut it back. And we'll give that a go. Right, so what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to cut this off basically. So, just going to start again. Yeah, you can see it's a bit frayed. Yeah, so we'll cut that off. There, like that. So I'm just going to set this so you kind of just got to guess it really, the thickness of the cable. So we'll start with that, see how that goes. Put that on there. That's about it. So, I think that's going to do a bit more. Actually, it's probably eaten into it a little bit too much. better. So, so we can get the spade connector on here, I bent it over and I shove it on there. Just get it sort of, you don't want it sticking out too much and then get my grips and I'm going to squeeze it on like that, nice and tight. And then That on 
there. Like that. And then we'll give it another go. Let's see if that works. So I'm going to turn it on. It's not worked, but I'll show you what's really going on. You can be able to see it. So you can see the flame, but you see a spark as well. While the flame is on. You can see the spark there. So that's what's going on. It's so what we're going to do now, we've got two options. It's either the spark electrode or the main PCB. So we'll start with the spark electrode. We're going to change that first, give that a go. Hopefully if it works, if not, then we're going to have to replace the PCB. These are our new parts. This is a spark electrode and you also get a lead as well. And that's a gasket. So we're going to replace these parts and then we'll give that a try. Okay, Miles, so we're going to take your spark plug off. Lead, pull it off there. You can take that out as well because we're going to replace the lead as well. You can take yeah. this off. Let's pull it off. A bit tight. Don't pull it by the wire though. No. We'll get our grips on it then. He dropped his screwdriver. A bit. Watch out, screw don't drop. That's it. So, this is the gasket, the old one anyway, so we're gonna pull it off like that. It's quite thin, really. So just brush out the way, like that. Now you're going to put that gasket over the top here. Be careful with it. Drop it down like that, that's it. So we'll get all the whole thing carefully now, and then we're going to, let's get one of your screws. I'll get a screw, and then we'll go up here, off of that in, through the hole. And then get the new screws in, you screw it up. Just nip it up with a screwdriver. Just a couple of turns, that's it. And get your one out. What's it like doing hands on like this, Miles? Um, very good. So you're still doing your plumbing at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, that was further the way through. That's it. So it's doing plumbing because, as a masterful engineer, you need the plumbing background to give you that understanding on hot water systems, pipe work and understanding heating systems as well because they're connected so it's a good thing for you to learn plumbing especially if you're the new engineer like Miles so good advice to take so we're going to turn it back on again so here's we go let's see what happens See the flame there? Nice blue flame, and there's no spark in there. It's staying on. There's no spark. So that's looking good. Yeah, I think we've cracked it this time. So it looks like it was the spark electrode. Yep, yeah, that's it. It's all good. It's all fired up. So that's going to be it on this video. We're all racing ahead, the fans going high speed 
that's all brilliant so that's me on this video so if you like what you've seen give us a like any comments you've got and that's it from me and i'll see you next video bye for now